This house is like me looking at micro bikinis. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> With a brand new series. No way. Yeah. Way. During trying times. <laughs> She's going to be a pain in the ass. Our house hunters need more help than ever. I don't know whether it's house hunting or armed combat. You're in the eye of the storm. We may have to rustle up miracles. If the two houses has a baby. But it's worth it to get people home. I love it already. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think it ticks every box. We want it. This time... Look, 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 look. ...helping struggling buyers relocate, we find ourselves in choppy waters. I think we should switch off the cameras and back away. At times, we're close to capsizing. You are looking trepidatious. Comes with a heavy price tag. Yeah, that's not so good. There's even talk of mutiny. We'll barricade the door. So I think it's probably too much. This isn't the way that things usually happen. But we've always got our eyes on the horizon. Wow. Who am I cry? <laughs> For where we are, this is amazing. I think I've fallen in love. <laughs> We're on the coast in South Devon. I'm with Amy, a single mum of two whose dream is to live by the sea. And I'm with seaside-loving Glenn and Natalie, who have been saving for years to buy a house with a sunny garden and space for their son Barnaby. You would save for years, wouldn't you, to live here on a day like this? Absolutely, Phil. I'm a huge fan of Devon. Whether you're after seaside towns, stunning coastal views, a quaint cottage in the countryside, or a cool city life, everyone's dream is available somewhere in this captivating county. Maybe that helps to explain why, even as we search, prices continue to climb. They've leapt 7% in the last year alone, with the average home coming in at over £340,000, nearly 56 grand above the national figure. And that is making life difficult for our first couple. Glenn is a revenue protection inspector for Great Western Railways, and Natalie runs her own cleaning business. These two Devon natives got together 25 years ago after a bit of gratuitous window shopping. I worked in a news agent. I used to go in and um, buy stuff I didn't really need. I definitely chased her, 100%. He was so different when I met him. Bold, fat, shy. <laughs> he was so nice back then. <laughs> Fast forward to present day, and some of the hair has grown back, and the family has expanded. Barnaby, or B as they call him, is now 10. The three of them are an inseparable family unit, intent on making the most of the seaside around their hometown of Torquay. It's a lovely place to live. Yeah. And we like to go to the beach with B, don't we? Make up games, throwing stones into the sea, all centered around B. We're a bit cheesy, we just yeah, love spending time we are together. A bit cheesy, yeah. You'd have to be absolutely crackers not to love it here. Eight years ago, Natalie and Glenn sold their flat in Torquay and moved into rented accommodation. But the galloping market put any chance of buying a family home out of reach, and the post-COVID influx of buyers has only made things worse. The houses were coming on the market and going within hours. So we stopped for a while because it was soul destroying. And it made a massive difference because I got left some money from my dad and then you got left some money from your mum and dad. So we could look at, you know, more expensive houses. Our beachy bunch have a budget of 275,000 to spend on a home with at least two bedrooms. But 18 months of searching, 35 viewings and one rejected offer later, they're no nearer to owning their own little slice of Torquay. Something's always just not quite right and not even to the point where you can compromise and things are just too far away from what we want. The gap between budget and expectations has capsized many a house hunter. Added to which their price band is incredibly popular with young families, and with Barnaby starting secondary school soon, the pressure is on. We need Kirsty's help because we've come to a dead end with it. And we need a fresh pair of eyes, we need don't a fresh we? Pair I of think. Eyes. And expert advice. We don't really know what we're doing, do we? Not at all. No. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I don't believe that for a minute. Their search has clearly turned out to be a bit of a tall order. Something I wanted to address up front. You are very tall. <laughs> How tall are you, Glenn? Six, seven. Why would you have a haircut that <laughs> gave you extra inches? I don't know. Attention. <laughs> I mean, I, I might be able to get something which has ceiling height for you, but not, not necessarily. We'll have to flatten his hair down. <laughs> not on that, though. <laughs> what do you think? held you back from being able to find the right thing? I think we've been quite picky. We want it to be our forever home. Right. So we want it to be as perfect as we can 
do within our budget? Your budget is 275. And you are looking for... Two double bedrooms. Two double yeah. bedrooms. Because yeah. Barnaby's 10 now. Yeah. He's going to have to have room for a desk. He wants a double bed as well. I'm not very good at vision. He's much better. Don't worry. I am I, trying. <laughs> I can help with vision. We'd like somewhere with sun in late afternoon, early evening. And we're not against road parking. And I sometimes finish work late, like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And I would have mm. to drive around 20, 30 minutes to try and find a parking oh, space. Oh, God, and then... that's no good. No. OK, I think I'm clear on priorities. We won't know that until we get out and look at some properties. So drink up and then we shall move on. Natalie and Glenn have a comfortable budget of £275,000, but could stretch to 280 pounds for the perfect home. They want a minimum of two double bedrooms and a kitchen diner for family meals. A garden with evening sun and off-street parking are must-haves, as is being within the right school catchment area for Barnaby. So my search will be focused on family-friendly areas to the north and northeast of Torquay Town, all within close proximity of the sea. Whereas I'll be looking further up the coastline, in and around Exmouth, targeting smart neighbourhoods with a community vibe. Amy worked in social services for eight years before developing an app that takes the paperwork out of the equation for frontline mental health workers. Our entrepreneur leads a busy single parent life with her two youngsters, Isabella, who's 10, and eight year old Jack, plus Labradoodle Lottie. Our family setup is that the two children live with me predominantly and we are very well supported by Josh, my ex-husband. Although our relationship hasn't worked out, the children are the most important thing to both of us. Co-parents Amy and Josh both live near Bath, but Amy wants to swap village life in Somerset for a seaside idyll in Devon. The plan is for is Jack and I to move to Exmouth and for Josh to find more of a city life, but all within a fairly short commute away. The move is very much about all of us and the next chapter of our lives. To our new adventure in Devon. Absolutely. New adventure. This desire to relocate has been floating around for the last couple of years, but Amy's been swimming against the tide and that is exhausting. It's really overwhelming trying to do this by myself and I've tried and haven't got very far. To be an hour and 40 minutes away from Exmouth is difficult, plus working and looking after children. She's after a four-bed family home with character. But despite a substantial budget of up to a million pounds, Amy has only managed to view six properties in Exmouth, one of which she offered on. The house was so beautiful. From the garden, you could see the sea in the background, grade two listed buildings, but I felt that given that I'm doing this by myself and the thatch needed replacing, that I had to be kind of sensible with the amount of money I could offer. Her bid was declined and her sporadic search has continued, although her priorities have since shifted. As much as I'd like to live in a beautiful house, the location is the most important thing for me because I want the children to be able to grow up somewhere safe. And that connectivity and being part of the community, those are the things that matter to me the most. Seems like you are her port in a storm, Phil. I may be a country boy, but I've earned my sea legs, Kirsty. Amy, I usually start by asking people how I can help, but I know Jack and Isabella start school down here in five months' time, don't they? Is and Jack are so, so excited about the move. There is definitely some pressure building. Any particular favourite areas? There's a beautiful place called Foxholes, and there's also the avenues. Budget's very healthy. Ideally, is around 800 to 900. Mm -hmm. If the dream house was found, then the top of my budget would be 1 million. OK. Tell me about the house. I'm keen to have a fourth bedroom so that my family and my friends can come and stay. The other thing that I'm aware of is the connection between the living space and the children and the kitchen is really important Got to it. me. To be able to look out at something beautiful would be absolutely be amazing, up. yes. I always think Devon's one of the most beautiful counties. There's views in all directions. Would you do work to a property? Doing work to a house um, isn't a deal breaker for me. OK, terrific. I'm very much here to help. We have to sort this out. Rapidly. We're almost the advanced party to come and try out this lifestyle down in Devon, yeah. and my mum and dad are keeping a keen, active eye to see what okay. opportunities that might bring for them. And have they been helping in the search so far? 
super helpful. My dad found the house that we called the Sensible House, mm -hmm. um, and we were calling him Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I was the sensible one. I'm glad. What was Kirsty? Kirsty was, was the you? wild card. My mum. <laughs> <laughs> we finally made it, Kirstels. We have understudies. Amy is comfortable with a budget of eight hundred thousand pounds, but could stretch to a million for the perfect property. She wants a beautiful house with an open-plan kitchen, dining, family space that leads out onto a sunny garden. It's all about flow. Four bedrooms, so space to work from home and for her parents, who will be regular guests. She's flexible on the condition of the house, but location is key. Close to the sea and part of a community where Isabel and Jack can spread their wings. Your usual order, madam. <laughs> you just put your hand out. I think we should keep this place a secret. I think we should switch off the cameras and back away. <laughs> Glenn and Natalie are local. Right. They have a, a little boy, Barnaby, and they just want a sunny garden and a nice house in the catchment area of the schools. Amy says her mum and dad come down and help sometimes, and they sit in the cafe and they play Phil and Kirsty. Right. Her dad is the sensible one, and right. her mum is Kirsty, the wild card. <laughs> I rather enjoyed that. <laughs> you, so, you are so easily Hello. distracted by waving fans. <laughs> Well, we are by the sea, Phil. Waves are very fashionable here. We know Amy loves Exmouth, and who can blame her? It's one of the oldest and most picturesque seaside towns in Devon. But its charms are no secret. Prices here have shot up 12% in the last year. But what makes our search particularly difficult is a serious lack of suitable stock. So I'm excited to have found a property in one of Amy's top locations, Foxholes Hill, just a pebble's throw from the beach. But this property is a bit of a project. She would need to create her dream home. Here we are on Foxholes Hill. Wow. Always popular, always in demand because of the views. I don't think it's stretching a point to say that opportunities only come up when people pass on from this world. Absolutely. And this, yes. is, this is a probate sale, so it needs a bit okay. of imagination. Um, it's a bungalow, which mm -hmm. isn't... So exciting, sure. but the views are amazing yeah. from being up here. The bungalow point, completely get it, but it's on a big plot. Yeah. And arguably, you could go up into the roof. Okay. But come and see what it's like to start with. Okay, thank you. Follow me. If Amy can get over the lack of curb appeal, there's an exciting opportunity waiting inside. As it stands, there's a large sitting room, separate dining room, and a good sized kitchen. Two separate bathrooms plus a conservatory. Things are a bit dated, but completely livable. There were three bedrooms rather than the ideal four, but that would be remedied as part of my grand plan. Outside, a lovely sunny garden with views of the sea, plus a driveway and garage to store all those buckets and spades. It's being marketed with a guide price of 800 to 850,000 pounds, so under her maximum spend of a million, although she would need to factor in the work. Now, it doesn't have the flow that you talked about okay. at the moment, but I think there's loads and loads of scope here. <gasps> Wonderful. So kitchen, yeah. just have a glance through there. Yeah. Currently the dining room. Yeah. But imagine if that was also the kitchen. By knocking the wall down between the kitchen and the dining room, Amy could create that all-important family space which flows nicely into the garden. Wow. That is an incredible view. It's on the market with a guide price of 800 to 850. This is obviously chain free. Yeah. With a time pressure of the school term and therefore needing to get a deal done, you could theoretically do the work whilst staying where you are. Okay. 50 grand would sort out the current living space. And for another 40, she could also convert the loft into a fourth bedroom for guests. And because this is such a sought-after location, that would all be money well spent. Amy doesn't seem overly excited by this first one. And I totally get that it can be quite a daunting prospect when you're a hard-working single mum to be shown a project. It's all about location. She does want to be near the sea and she does want to have views. I'm just not confident <laughs> that it's going to be from this house. I think you may be right, Phil. This is a great find, but Amy's heart would need to be in it. The question on my mind is, is levels of work. I can see that potentially this could be amazing. 
It's just the floor plan, how it would fit together. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. Got it. I don't want to rock the boat, Phil, but it looks to me like location is only part of what Amy's looking for. I think you're right. I might need to tackle this a bit differently. We're house hunting on the English Riviera in a market that's seen calmer waters after a somewhat choppy couple of years. My outdoorsy family of three have been saving up to put a new roof over their heads in their hometown of Torquay. And my family are looking to embark on a new adventure with a move from rural Somerset to a home by the sea. Single mum, former social worker and now a successful entrepreneur, Amy has struggled to fit long distance house hunting into her already packed schedule. But with only five months before Jack and Isabel are due to start their new schools, the pressure's on to find a picture-perfect home in Exmouth. Property One had the dream location, but didn't pull on her heartstrings. It's a bungalow, which mm -hmm. isn't so exciting. As for Natalie and Glenn, their search over the past 18 months has been choppy to say the least. High demand in their price bracket means they've struggled to find a family home in Torquay that floats their boat. We were going to view houses, we'd get there and one of us go, why have we come to look at this house? <laughs> I'm hoping my first property will deliver that elusive feel-good factor. We're kicking off in Plainmore, an area to the north of the town and one of their top spots. This house is in a lovely residential area, just less than 10 minutes to the beach. Torquay is one of the sunniest places in the UK and it hasn't let us down today. Here we are. That looks like parking for two cars that to me. That looks but... amazing. Yeah. Yep. Perfect so far. Glenn, well, well, it's steady <laughs> going. Yeah, done, yeah. How are we location-wise? Brilliant. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really central. It's near my mum's house. He's new school. Oh, oh, careful, Natalie. If it starts too good, it can sometimes <laughs> be a bad <laughs> sign. You'll be reading tea leaves next, Kirsty. The house is so good, I just don't want anything to jinx it. On the ground floor, there's a huge sitting room to the front, contemporary kitchen breakfast room for family meals, plus handy utility and a separate WC. Upstairs, there are three good-sized bedrooms. Barnaby can get his first double bed, and there's that sought-after third bedroom, which is also a double. The garden is southwest facing, ideal for soaking up the afternoon sun and, as we know, the parking they really want. But not everything is perfect. The guide price of £275 to £280,000 is at the very top of their budget and there are seven viewings already booked in. Thank goodness we've managed to get in to see it first. So, this house is in lovely nick. It was a complete wreck and they've done it up slowly, 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 and now they are selling it. Love this. Oh, look at your face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're both looking super <laughs> cheery. <laughs> oh, my cry. Whoa, okie dokie. Right. Let's go this way. Blimey, this might be the most positive first viewing I've ever had. So this is the kitchen. Wow, I love this. And then have a peep at the garden there. Where do we sign? <laughs> It's a little bit of a miracle, this house. It came on six days ago, but no one's seen it yet. Guy price 275 to 280. But you just move in. Yeah. yeah don't you do know, anything. You don't do anything. It's just lovely so far, isn't it's it? Just, yeah. Hats off to you, Kirsty. You certainly know how to make a good first impression. Oh, this is a nice space, isn't it? A nice size. It's a good size, isn't it? You definitely get a double bed. Really bright. They've got like two wardrobes and there's still loads of space yeah, as well. Still plenty of space, isn't there? Oh, I love this. Again, it's so bright. So bright. Week in, week out, we're trying to help people who are in sticky situations. And if this is the one week where things go smoothly and the first house is perfect and they absolutely love it, do you reckon I deserve one week where it's a little easier than usual? That may be the case for now but any one of the other seven viewings that are booked in could steal this place out from under your noses. I think I've fallen in love. <laughs> my house. What an absolute fairy tale viewing. But if this is the house for them, you need to get serious. Loved it. This is the best one we've seen out of all the properties. Ever. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. You walk in and you're just like, wow, 
I don't want to muck about with no, this. No. We're the first people to see this house. We're lucky that we've been... It's going to be snapped up if... It's going to be snapped up. Yeah. Don't want to rush you or hassle you or anything else. But just do your second viewing now. It's incredible. So just go back in. We will. <laughs> yeah. Just go. Go. <laughs> Ordinarily, I'd recommend a second viewing a bit later, but right now, we don't have that luxury. This isn't the way that things usually happen. But when you've seen 35 things, when you know your town, and when you feel you're in the property you want to live in for the rest of your life, you should get on with it. I sense some speedy negotiations on the horizon. There's another viewing on this property in a couple of hours. I barricade the door so they oh. can't. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style, Natalie. <laughs> or make an offer which is accepted by the vendor who then cancels the other viewings. I, I would be gutted if someone else came to look at this because Agree. they would snap it up. Agree. I can count on the fingers of one hand how often this happens, but we need to make our move right away. Property One is clearly the house for them and it might not be available by the end of the day. Now, it's on at offers between 275 and 280. What would you be prepared to pay for this house? I think we would be looking at the 280. I think anything less than that to save a few thousand pounds yeah. wouldn't be enough to stop them allowing the other viewings. Do you agree? Yeah. If I can... Secure it. And make sure there's no more viewings. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good luck. Thank you very much. It just so happens that Daniel, the agent, is waiting outside to pick up the keys, which gives me the rare opportunity to put in an offer for Glenn and Natalie face to face. On a scale of one to ten? Ten being really nervous? Yeah. Probably about 45, 50. <laughs> just above then. Yeah. It's strange you can't about it. Do you think there's a figure at which your clients will be prepared to cancel other offers? I would need confirmation from them, but yeah. I think it would be top end of guide. And that figure is £280,000. That's the top of Natalie and Glenn's budget. So we've only got one shot at this. If I offered you two eighty, on the basis that that offer was made solely to prevent other viewings, um, could you get back to me? Yes. We've done everything we can for now. I think what we should do is go look at the next property yeah. because much as we like this one, we haven't got it yet. <laughs> Let's continue looking and see how it goes. Yeah. Well, as first viewings go, that one wasn't too bad, Gersty. Yes, but it's not over till we've got a deal. Back in Exmouth with Amy. And for our second viewing, we're one street away from the Avenues, another favourite area of hers. But unlike Property One, she could move into this house straight away. Kirsty's here, and hopefully she's brought the Midas touch with her. You are looking trepidatious at this house. <laughs> and we've only just met, but I can sense that. I'm really wanting to find a beautiful house, and I'm not sure whether this First impressions makes me think beautiful house. So curb appeal, big part of search. Also access to beach and views. I tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to go into this house with Amy and you are going to stay here. It's a great house, but I can tell from Amy's face that it's a disappointment. I should be waiting in the sun. Clearly you're on a roll, Kirsty, and far be it for me to get in the way. I'll soon find out if there's hope for this place. And there is a lot to love inside. The layout and flow are ideal. The kitchen diner opens up into the lounge and the office, creating one big communal space for Amy and the children to be together. There's also a separate living room to the front, double bedroom, shower room and a self-contained annex. Ideal for when her parents come to stay. In fact, guests would be spoilt for choice as there are a further three bedrooms on the first floor plus second bathroom, all in move-in condition. Outside, there's a sunny rear garden where Labradoodle Lottie can run around and a garage. At £730,000, this place is 270 grand below her maximum spend of a million. If Amy can get over the exterior, this house could be an exciting option. And don't worry, Kirsty, I'm here if needed. Well, this is a big family space. Exactly. This room is beautiful and it's really light and we would all be able to be in here doing homework and cooking and having an amazing shared space. Yeah. 
but the front of the house and the vibes are not too exciting. How many houses have you seen? Six previously to today, and yeah. I saw one this morning. How would this come in that eight? Not very high up. OK, so that's not good. I think Amy has made up her mind, Phil. Yes, Kirsty, but location was the most important. Now it seems like curb appeals in the driving seat. When everything's a priority, it's difficult to talk about priorities. You haven't sold it already, have you? Come and sit down. What did she say? She said that of the eight properties she'd seen, yeah. it was maybe four or five in the list. OK. That's not so good. She wants a pretty house. I totally I know, get that, but, but she, she also needs an awful lot of things. She and looked disappointed, and you have to see that. If the next house is really pretty, then that's fine. Thanks. If only it was that simple. I'm trying to look at the bigger picture here. Here she is, the woman of the moment. And what did you make of it? I think the layout is amazing. I don't think there's a lot of character going on. Definitely want something that is more visually attractive. Yes, That's a, That is a must, it's not a like. It's a must. We should head on down. OK, yeah. your wish is my command. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the magic happen at your next property, Phil. You and me both. We're on the English Riviera in Devon, where my couple, Glenn and Natalie, have been trawling the Torquay property market for the past 18 months but haven't managed to land the perfect place. Although the tide may have finally turned in their favour. Natalie and Glenn like the first house we looked at. I think I've fallen in love. <laughs> my house. So I'm just chilling out on a rock. <laughs> but only for a minute, because although they've made an offer, we haven't heard from the agent yet. So we need a fallback option. With Amy, I'm definitely finding opportunities in the right patch, but so far the right house is proving trickier to find. Amy's been dreaming of a family-friendly seaside home in Exmouth for years. Now that it's close to becoming a reality, she's finding it hard to prioritise her wish list. She didn't get on board with property two. The front of the house and the vibes are not too exciting. So I'm trying a different tack. We're heading three miles north of Exmouth to the stunning village of Limpston on the River X. A lovely community and plenty of activities for the kids within walking distance. I reckon this quirky Grade 2 listed house could be a fabulous long-term solution. So, Amy, we are on the hunt for a bit more curb appeal today. OK. It's stunning. It's beautiful here. I want to show you that. It is a bit left field. OK. It's not quite what it seems from the front. That's an old village shop. OK. But it gets interesting through here. Oh. What a tease you are, Phil. I have to admit, I'm rather excited about this one. It has that all-important family layout that we know Amy loves, with the kitchen leading out onto a lovely sunny garden. What used to be the village shop is now a games room, which should score highly with the kids. Or it would make a great separate living room. There's also a snug or potential home office for Amy. It could do with a bit of updating here and there, there's bags of character to play with. On the first floor, there's a huge main bedroom to the front, a second double plus family bathroom, whilst upper level, there's another pair of good-sized bedrooms. But the delights don't stop there. The old poach house has been converted into a fabulous annex, with a spacious sitting room, compact kitchen, shower room and bedroom all beautifully done. The guide price is £900,000. A hundred grand under Amy's maximum spend of a million. So there's money in the kitty for any renovations. This isn't the front door, but mm. comes straight in to mm. the family space. Yes. It has absolutely got a nice feel and what an amazing big space to be able to be with the children, yeah. be cooking. Mm. I love the flow. I love how connected it is to the garden. Great. I can hear the birds. Yeah. Amy seems genuinely enthusiastic about this place, Phil. Well, I'm certainly feeling chirpier. Oh, wow. So we're in the shop? <laughs> this and is... the bar? <laughs> it's the front facade that is listed. It's grade two list. OK. So you couldn't muck around with that. There's so many things you could do with this space. I'm trying to, like, work out the floor plan yeah. in my head. But, yeah, I'm intrigued. The upstairs could be just as exciting. And because it's a probate sale with no chain, there's a good chance Amy and the kids could be settled before term starts. Bit of a head spinner, this one, as a whole package, and I've no idea yet 
where her head is at. But what I do know is that it is important to Amy to be able to have people to come and stay and potentially her parents for longer periods of time. At just over 2,300 square feet, this space is almost a third bigger than the last property we saw. The possibilities are almost endless, and the annex is a real bonus. Oh, wow. It's almost too cool to be an annex. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely in an interesting house. There is quite a lot of money to spend. Yeah. And I think because this is kind of the top of my budget, I think it's probably too much. It feels like we're doing a good job of ruling houses out. I don't think this will be the one. But it is making Amy rethink a previous property. All of this process has been so helpful. The house that I did make an offer on, yeah. it's made me kind of really reconsider that option. It had all been rewired, it had all got new bathrooms in, and I know that the thatch will need replacing. Yeah. And then there was two holiday lets. You wouldn't have to do the work, but all of this, like, how much could this cost? Yes. For this house being on at 900. So it was on at 950, you offered 850, they declined that. We should probably tackle the one that I've got lined up. See what you make of that, and then revisit the thatched one. Yeah. Let's move on, okay. see where we get to. Thank you. Sometimes the journey isn't straightforward. You need to do a bit of exploration before you can find your way. And that's exactly what we've done here with Amy. I'm super keen to see what happens next. As for Glenn and Natalie in Torquay, they may have fallen in love with property one, but we're being sensible and keeping our options open as well. Whilst we wait for news on their offer, we're heading a mile down the road to Ellicum, another popular spot in the right school catchment for Barnaby. But this house is bigger and cheaper, so it will make for an interesting comparison. So, here we are. Probate sale, but doesn't have the parking. Sure. So, that's the compromise. Yeah. But there's a load of space in this house, and you're going to like the price. So, should we go and have a look? Let's, yeah. yeah. Okie doke, off to you. A rather subdued reaction compared to Property One, but I want them to see everything this house has to offer. On the ground floor, there's a spacious lounge to the front, separate dining room and a big kitchen to the rear. It could do with a bit of TLC, but nothing serious. On the first floor, two double bedrooms, plus a single and a shower room. The loft has been converted into a large main bedroom with ensuite. The garden needs some attention, but it traps the afternoon sun. There's a huge shed and, as we know, on-street parking. At offers in excess of £250,000, there's a good chance they could get it for 30 grand less than their maximum 280. So not only is it cheaper than property one, it's also nearly 450 square feet bigger. You don't see this very often, but I think it's quite cleverly done. Yeah. This came on the market three months ago at 270, it's now down to 250. I think a lot of people are looking at this and they don't have the vision. Yeah. But, you know, you've just made an offer of 280 on something yeah. that's smaller than this. Yeah. What could you do with £30,000? It's something to think about, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. In their heads, they may be considering this place, but it's clear their hearts are still at the last house. Glenn, mm -hmm. you're, like, standing tall and being very quiet. I, I think to spend thirty grand, I don't think we could get it looking... As nice as, as, nice as that last one. And the size doesn't bother us because I we don't agree. need any bigger than that house. Property One has put their entire search in the shade. I get the feeling nothing's going to change that. So I really hope their offer's accepted. Here we go. It's Daniel, the agent from Property One. Uh, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Hold on two seconds. At 280 grand, they've stretched their budget to the max. It's just a question of whether that's enough. Well, I have great news. The property is yours. All viewings have been cancelled. Oh, Daniel, you're an absolute star. Thank you, doesn't... Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good piece of news. The three of us are all standing here in a bit of a state. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Thank you so amazing. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. A guy can't yeah. even can't even speak over it. So excited! I can't believe that it's a little bit emotional. A little bit emotional, just a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> like, happy, yeah. so, and relieved. It's been yeah. yeah. To not even have to look for properties oh. anymore. It's just going to be incredible. You managed the fairy tale ending, Kirsty. Yes, and as for property two, it's a great house, but not for Natalie and Glenn. They are officially off the market.
Back with Amy in Exmouth, and it feels like we're finally making progress. But we're not there yet, so I'm going to try a little bit of a wild card. This modern, detached, eco-friendly house ticks almost every box on her wish list. It's slap bang in the middle of one of her favourite locations and walking distance from the sea. But first things first. Now, I am at the moment trying to arrange access for us to see the thatched place that you offered on. OK. But meanwhile, okay. this is on the market. Wow. For where we are, this is amazing. Like, we are in the yeah. most desirable place in Exmouth. That's why it's 1.1. That is why it's 1.1. And how long has this been on the market? About two months. OK. So it takes you over budget, but you don't need to spend any money on it. It isn't the most attractive of the houses that we have seen, but in terms of the location, it's amazing. Keen to have a look. Yeah? Yeah. Amy's well aware of the strength of this location, and if she can get over the frontage, we might have a contender. On ground level, there's a huge sitting room, separate dining room, and that all-important open-plan kitchen living family space, plus handy utility and cloakroom. On the first floor, four double bedrooms, one with ensuite, and a family bathroom all nicely done, plus a further two large bedrooms and bathroom on the second level. Plenty of space for the kids, for Amy to work from home, and for family and friends to come and stay. Outside, the garden is beautifully landscaped. There's a driveway for four cars, a garage, and even a wine cellar. The only issue is the price, 1.1 million. It's 100 grand over Amy's maximum spend. But we're led to believe there's a little bit of flexibility on the price. Oh, wow. So it's a really well-proportioned room. Yeah. And as you can see, it's in beautiful condition. Beautiful condition. It's really simple and easy to live in. Yeah. Kitchen. Enjoying the garden, it's got side access for the dog. Yes. How lovely that this is all connected. It's much nicer inside than I had thought from the outside of it and a bit of a don't judge a book by its cover, perhaps. She can see all the practical advantages of this place, but at 1.1 million, it comes at a price. This is actually really difficult because part of the move for Amy is about lifestyle, being here, enjoying the kids growing up, having all the activities on the doorstep that they want to get involved in. But equally, some of that means that she doesn't want to work quite as hard. So stretching the budget is a difficult one. I think your job right now, Phil, is to find out which priority really is the priority. It ticks so many of the boxes, but comes with a heavy price tag. Yeah. If you like, it's the budget that's the compromise. We've got the position, we've yeah. got the space, we've got the numbers of rooms, we've got the garden, yes. the rub. Is the price. Agreed. This is our front runner for Amy, but she has some number crunching to do if this house is going to be the one that lets her live her Devon dream. In Devon, with busy single mum Amy, and we have a front runner, Property 4, the impressive modern detached house, but it is over budget. However, at the 11th hour, we've managed to get a viewing on this place, the thatched Grade 2 listed house in Exmouth that Amy offered on before we came on board. Unlike Property 4, it's not quite in one of her top spots, but it is an impressive house. This all looks very beautiful, Amy. The things that I was concerned about with this house was the thatch and that I know that that needs replacing, mm -hmm. and it is a big garden to maintain. Mm. So those were the not so great things about this house, but there were lots of great things about this house yes, too. Yes, I can see it is absolutely enchanting. Should we have a look around? Yes. Come on, show me in. OK. <laughs> Amy has obviously seen this house before, so I'm here to give her a second opinion if she's thinking of upping her original offer. On the ground floor, there's a charming sitting room, dining room and bespoke kitchen with separate utility, all finished to a very high standard. There's a study for Amy to work from home and the most fabulous boot room I've ever set eyes on. Upstairs, there are four bedrooms, three charming doubles and a single, so a choice of rooms for Isabella and Jack, plus a modern wet room. The house sits on half an acre of mature gardens with a garage and far-reaching views. There's also an adjoining cottage, which is used for holiday lets, with a modern kitchen and separate living room downstairs. Whilst upstairs, three lovely bedrooms and a large bathroom, plus a self-contained flat in the garden. 
Amy might use these for all the guests she can handle, or our entrepreneur may even sense a business opportunity herself. The guide price is £950,000, and the owners have let it be known that they won't accept a penny less. That's 50 grand below Amy's maximum spend of a million. Oh Amazing. my goodness Incredible me! Windows. Absolutely stunning. I can see why this has been percolating along. I talked to the agent and the vendor. The extra accommodation is making about 30, 35,000 pounds of profit a year. That is a lot of money. Quite a big income. All in all, this house does really pull on my heartstrings and yes. it's very beautiful. Seeing this property together and getting to grips with the finances has clearly moved the house firmly into first place. There we go. Council of War time, Amy. As for my pair in sunny Torquay, with their asking price offer of 280 grand accepted on this fabulous three-bed semi and all other viewings cancelled, it's time for the whole family to see their new home. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Hiya. Hi, yeah. Lovely, Jan. Yes. Oh, very nice, nice to meet, to meet you, you. And you. And Barnaby, oh. very nice <laughs> to meet you. So, just before we go in, what happens if Barnaby doesn't like this house? He's going to move into uh -oh. mum's. Yeah. That's right. Plan B. <laughs> Sorry, Nan, but I think it'll be plan A all the way. Francis. No, this would be my room. What? Is this your room? Yes, I sell this room. No, this yeah. is our room. Well, flip a coin. <laughs> Ed's we win, tells you lose. Wait, wait. <laughs> it's such a joy to see Natalie, Glenn and Barnaby making plans for their new home. This is the best part of my job. How much of a thumbs up does it get? Oh, I think that's a big thumbs up. Two isn't thumbs it? up. Why don't you stand back there and I'll take a picture? One, two, Three. <laughs> a picture-perfect ending. Who could ask for anything more? Back with Amy in Exmouth. And it's important we take stock of her situation before any decisions are made about the thatched house. If you were to make another offer on that beautiful thatched house, that is going to stretch the finances. Yeah. I'm worried it pushes you back into that remit. I don't disagree with you. I think the amount of money that I need to borrow will be looked after by those holiday lets, so I feel that the risk is mitigated there. Amy clearly wants this house, so we need a strategy. Let's talk numbers. So they are asking 950,000. I've spoken to the lady vendor, she says we're holding out for 950. Okay. You offered 850, 850 and that was a few months ago. I wonder if we go in at something like 910. Yeah. That does feel kind of like a sensible step up. Yeah. So it gives a little bit of room to think about it and come back to us. Yeah. I like the tactics. OK. Want to phone a friend? You're my friend today, Phil. <laughs> I'll be your friend. <laughs> if you get this place for £910,000, Phil, I think you'll have a friend for life. Nina, hello. It's Phil Spencer here. She does very much like the house. It comes with its challenges. I do have an offer for you. The number is £910,000. Thanks, Nina. I'll stand by. Well, she sounded pleased to get an offer. I, I don't think it'll be a quick answer. It'll be my reading of the situation. But it might be a quick no. Well, at least we'd know where we stand. <laughs> How are you feeling? Nervous. So am I. I don't think we'll sort this out today, but we're in the game. The next day, we've had our offer rejected, and even a revised £930,000 bid hasn't cracked it. I've continued to negotiate, and now there's some news for Amy. Phil, hello. The best deal that I can get at you, including all of the furniture in both of the um, additional properties, to be in by the school year. £940,000. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, my goodness, I can't wait to tell the kids. Yeah. <gasps> well done, many congratulations. See you. Thank you, bye. As a boy, Phil, I knew you could do it. A few weeks later, and it's all systems go for Natalie and Glenn with their new house in Torquay. First thing we're going to do when we get the keys go and have a glass of wine in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the boxes, even if it's chucking them rain. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and Barnaby's eager to make himself at home in his new bedroom. 
he's super excited to get a double bed, isn't he? The possibility of getting a television in his room yeah. for the first time. Yeah, he's going to be loving life, isn't he? Yeah. So for Natalie and Glenn, they can finally put those stressful years of house hunting behind them and enjoy their new home by the sea. I don't think we could have found the house without Kirsty. No. Genuinely changed our lives. It's amazing what she's done for us. And found a house that ticked all the boxes. Massive, massive yeah, thank you. From all of um, us, all three of us. Clearly a house that was a case of love at first sight, Kirsty. Wonderful. It was obviously meant to be. Amy is also busy preparing for their life-changing move to Exmouth. A very busy, exciting and slightly overwhelming three months ahead. We need to get ready for the new schools and then to get all of our house moved. So there is plenty to do. And heaps to be excited about as well. I took Isabella and Jack to see the house. They couldn't believe their eyes. They were straight away running around the gardens trying to decide who was going to have which bedroom. They were super, super excited and just couldn't wait to get in there. Isabella and Jack's dad, Josh, is on the case, hunting for somewhere to rent in Exmouth. Then the family will be ready to start their new life before term begins. It is incredibly exciting to be able to now see it and almost touch this new life that we are planning. So it's really, really great. I can't wait. Big thank you, Phil. You've helped me to turn my dream into reality. It was quite a journey, but we got there in the end, and it's just fantastic to see them happily making plans. If you'd like help finding your next home, then we want to hear from you. You can apply online at channel4.com forward slash take part. In the train flow night on the starlit side I find solace in the stillness as time goes by Dolphin beats, rest my soul like a gentle kid In this peaceful moment there's nothing mess I feel in the